<sighs> wow, time is running out. I can't put off work any longer. I need to carry on with my YouTube videos. I don't want to let down my students. Hi everybody and welcome back to Rude English. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing phrasal verbs. Students often struggle with phrasal verbs and they try to avoid them, but native speakers use them all the time, so it's really important that you understand them at least. Don't worry, because I'm going to tell you all you need to know about phrasal verbs, so don't go anywhere. So what is a phrasal verb? Well, a phrasal verb consists of a verb, like run, and a preposition, like out. These words come together to create a new meaning. So to run out means to exhaust or to expire. Phrasal verbs are usually informal and they often have a formal synonym. So if we go back to the examples from the introduction, put off means the same as to avoid, and carry on means the same as continue, and lit down means the same as disappoint. Consequently, phrasal verbs are really important in understanding informal or colloquial English, the type of English that we use every day with friends, family and colleagues. So let's look in more detail at the two different types of phrasal verbs. Morning everybody. Edward, did you take out Fat Tony at the weekend? Yes boss, I took him out. He won't cause any more problems. You did? Excellent, excellent. And Eddie. Did you take out Billy the Snitch? Yes, boss. I took him out. You won't see him again. That is fantastic. Well done. Well done. Ed, did you take out Sexy Sarah? Yeah, I took her out to the cinema. We had a great time. Afterwards, we went to a restaurant and we kissed at the end of the night. It was, it was magical. I think I might ask her to marry me. Some phrasal verbs have multiple meanings, so Take out can mean to kill or destroy, but it can also mean to go on a date with someone. Take out is a separable phrasal verb. This means that the verb and the preposition can be separated with the object. So we can say, I took out Fat Tony. Or, I took Fat Tony out. We can also use an object pronoun and say, I took him out. But be careful. We can't say, I took out him. Because we never use the object pronoun after a separable phrasal verb. Other common separable phrasal verbs include pick up, turn on, turn off, turn up, turn down. Throw away, try on, write down, call back, call off, and put on or put away. Okay, here's the plan. You go through the door, pass the security guard, deactivate the alarm, and then you grab the money and run. Do you think you can stick to the plan? Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, I can stick to it. Stick to means to follow, but it can easily be confused with the verb to stick, which means to attach. Stick to is an inseparable phrasal verb, which means the verb and the preposition are never separated by the object. So we can say, I can stick to the plan, or I can stick to it. But we can never say, I can stick the plan to, or I can stick it to. These are incorrect. 
Other common inseparable phrasal verbs often include the verb look, such as look for, look after, look forward to, look into, look at, look around, and look up. Or they include the verb get, such as get on, get off, get back, get away, get in, get out, get up, get down, get through, get along, get rid of, and get over. Like I said earlier, phrasal verbs are usually informal, and there are many rude phrasal verbs and slang phrasal verbs. The most common ones often include the word fuck, such as fuck off, which means to leave, fuck up, which means to damage or destroy, fuck around, which means to behave badly, and fuck over, which means to cheat. Remember, not all phrasal verbs take an object, and some are simply used as a command. You can find out if a phrasal verb takes an object, or if it's separable or inseparable, by using a good dictionary. Some slang or colloquial phrasal verbs won't appear in the dictionary, so in this case I recommend you consult your teacher or another reliable source for the meaning and use. Well that's all we have time for, thanks for watching. Your challenge this week is to tell a story using phrasal verbs. So leave your story in the comments below if you want my feedback. And also remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.